Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to JFD Trader's Tea Time with me, that is on Charles, because today is the 17th of April, 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Friday's afternoon recorded session uh, where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, uh, the usual stuff. But before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our uh, risk disclaimers. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so um, also just before we jump in into the charts, a uh, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. Um, and of course, our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page, which we also update on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there, guys. So uh, now then, this this was the figure from this morning. Let's quickly update uh, this one and see what's happening here in regards to the coronavirus. Um, well, most likely the figure has risen. Uh, let's see by how much. Um, so, okay, so this is quite a an okay number, I would say. Um, so not many, uh, not many. Uh, infections and well comparing to of course to what we had previously and of course the death toll unfortunately continues to rise um however um yeah it's um at least it's kind of slowing down a little bit um here the table is a little bit wrong because again italy is not in the first place uh, in terms of deaths it's the united states um, with the total amount of deaths of 33,000. so uh yeah guys for now it's um it's uh, the UN, United States are leading the the table here in, in with the amount of deaths. So, okay, let's see how the markets are reacting to everything. Um, the markets are uh, slightly on the positive side because, um, well, I mean, looking at this picture, we can see that um, the especially the European ones uh, are taking positively the fact that there is a slowdown in the amount in the total infections and deaths. Um, of course, again, as uh, as I've mentioned, to, uh, as I've mentioned, the idea here in in my report this morning, uh, which you can find in our website, um, basically, for now, investors will be focusing on the Coronavirus. Um, although we are getting bad data across the globe, um, bad economic data uh, countries are delivering on that yes um, still investors are focused on the coronavirus once the uh, coronavirus gets out of the way most likely that everybody will start focusing on the bad economic data and then we could see a bit of a, uh, a decline because again uh, the, the data is not very good and to be honest it's, it's terrible so um, that's why be very careful guys for now yes we could continue targeting the upside here but only from the very short term perspective. So how we could look at this one is, as I mentioned this morning, we in order to aim for higher levels, we need to see a push above the 10,820 territory, which is the current highest point of this week. And uh, if, of course, if it pushes higher today, then yes, this would confirm a forthcoming higher high. Um, more buyers maybe could could join in, but maybe this could be left for next week. So again, something to consider, something to keep in mind. Um, in case this suddenly breaks this upside line and the, the index drifts below the uh, psychological 10,000 territory, now this is where it could turn out to be ugly for the indices. So keep your eyes on that one. Uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. Now here the situation is, it's still okay, I would say, um, still somewhat positive uh, because we're still balancing above this um, upside support line taken from the low the 23rd of March. And in a way for us to get comfortable with higher levels, we would like to see a push above this barrier here, the current highest point of this week near the 24,000 and uh, 04 levels. So looking at the cash index right now, actually, 
Um, okay, so looking at the cash index right now, we are seeing that the price uh, is above this territory already. So basically, um, we will have a nice opening gap here to the upside today. And uh, yep, the price will be above this barrier. So above this 24,000 and 0, 040 level. So we'll keep a close eye on it because if, uh, if it drifts a little bit lower, if the index stays above this territory, uh, or at least if it stays above this upside support line, we will remain positive in the short run because like as I mentioned earlier um, we are still skeptical about a long-lasting recovery here so that's why guys for now uh, we'll keep an eye on this idea yes we will continue targeting the upside but only for from the short-term perspective um, the next target for us could be around the 25,000 mark um, that psychological 25,000 or it could continue f traveling further north a little bit higher uh, towards the uh, the 100 EMA the 200 EMA here and then yep we would take it from there guys so for now that's the situation let's see how this is gonna play out but again we are more uh, bullish and bearish on this one right now as long as it stays above this upside support line now in terms of the downside now previously I talked about this 22,595 territory and now I talked about this one yesterday um, however given the fact that we managed to already climb a little bit higher here uh, what we could do here and what we could consider is the low of yesterday and uh, the low of or actually even even better the, the low of um, of this week which is around the 23,095 territory so a nice good break above this upside line and a drop below the uh, below the 90 uh, sorry 23,000 and uh, 0 23,095 level uh, 23,095 level there we go finally managed to uh, <laughs> spit it out um, basically if we get a drop below this territory at the low of this week then yes we could uh, aim for further declines here uh, for now uh, be very careful like I said we are still above this upside support line so yep uh, keep your eyes on that one guys uh, WT oil so uh, looking at this picture well I mean this is working out nicely as I've mentioned this uh, this morning as if I was talking about this one this whole week what I was mentioning that if we get a daily close below the psychological 20 territory then yes we there is a possibility a large a good possibility for this one to drift further south and the next potential target could be around the uh, 17 uh, 17.12 17 mark and this is where it could become very very interesting for the buyers uh again that's uh that's for now this is a big because don't get me wrong uh we have already been drifting quite a lot lower but this is a very good area of support here if this area the lowest point of no uh the, the lowest point of 2001 around the uh 17 uh 17 12 territory if it holds we could see a bit of a rebound and that's the reason why i was saying that they could be quite interesting for the buyers um however don't get me wrong this doesn't mean that we could uh, see a push a strong push higher from here still it, the commodity remains under a lot of pressure and again if somebody thinks that maybe this couldn't travel all the way here towards that uh, 10 10 dollar mark well again we live in the uh, extraordinary times right now so uh, anything could be possible and uh, it could be maybe just a brief visit here um, and then we could see a rebound and a push back to the upside however do not exclude this opportunity do not exclude this uh, potential move where we could see a drift not only a drift towards the uh, 1712 territory but even lower so keep your eyes on this one guys uh, by the way the that uh, that area here near the uh, near the 10.65 dollar mark uh, is the lowest point of 1998 zone. No, sorry, zone 1998 year. So um, that's the lowest point of that year. And uh, well, I mean, this could be quite an attractive uh, level to consider. For now, the main level that we're keeping close eye on is the lowest point of 2001 near the 17.12 zone. So keep your eyes on that one. Um, so let me just quickly get back here and uh, yep for now you can see that the commodity is drifting heavily to the downside gold gold is also sliding this morning i talked about this one and what i was saying that if we see a drop below the 170403 territory then yes there could be a chance for this one to drift further south uh, you can see that this is what happened the gold fell below this territory and kind of continued drifting and almost made its way towards this 1680 territory which uh, acted as a good area of resistance 
previously now it could it could take the role of support and in a way it almost did now the big question here is will the the uh, commodity remain above the 1704 territory if it does today then well this could lead to a bit of uh, uh, a bit of a reversal here back to the upside maybe going into next week however if it stays below this uh, level below this highest point of march near the 1704 then uh, yes we could consider a bit of a deeper extension here to the downside at least towards the 1645 zone so we'll take it from, uh, but again for now we're watching this one we're watching it carefully today and we're going to be keeping close eye on the close uh, ethereum ethereum i talked about this one as well this morning and uh basically what i was saying that uh because we have violated those two previous lines uh, what i was talking about now the main focus is here on the on the some of these levels here so basically on the 146.63 territory roughly around here on the downside and uh, which is also the mm, the lowest point of this this week and of course we will uh, aim for this uh, keep an eye on this um this level right here the 176.55 uh mark uh, by the way let's get rid of this this is a bit in the way and let's probably get rid of this one as well so just clear up the chart a little bit um and uh, yep on the upside where this is the level that we're keeping a close eye on so basically in other words we need to see a clear breakthrough one of these levels one of these highlighted areas before we could consider a further short-term directional move again it's closer to this barrier however uh we have seen that this is a very strong area of resistance near this 200 ema on the daily chart so that's why wait for a clear break and then we could aim for some up more upside uh, uh, for now you can see that the mm, the crypto managed traveled higher yesterday but today it's kind of failing to move above it so yep we're keeping a close eye on until it's uh, uh, keeping a close eye on it one and i eye on this one until it stays here in this little range uh we will remain neutral and uh yep for now we're just like i said observing the price action uh litecoin uh quickly on this one now this one's a little bit more on the bearish side now again even though we saw a nice push higher yesterday uh, let me just adjust these some of these arrows here very quickly um, even though we saw a nice push uh, higher yesterday still it failed to push back above this uh, short term uh, upside support line taken from the low of the 20 uh, sorry 16th of March um, in a way for us to get comfortable with higher levels we would need to see a push above this barrier here the the high of uh, of the current highest point of April near the 47.68 zone and then we could uh, aim for further uh, further upside again because a break above this level would confirm a forthcoming higher high and well more buyers could be joining in here so let me just quickly highlight this one for our future reference that's where we're going to be keeping close eye on for the upside um but the reason why i'm saying that this is uh, still looking a little bit more bearish because again uh, don't get me wrong this upside line is also seen as a temp as a tentative one so for now the only thing that we can actually if we want to draw some 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 sort of lines here then yep uh all of them to be honest are going to be tentative however yes we could just keep a uh, keep an eye on a few of these and one of the other ones to watch is this one right here basically this downside resistance line taken from the high of the 7th of March and uh, I do understand it's a little bit of a tentative one however we'll keep an eye on this one for for now and as you can see it can it kind of continues to act as a good area of resistance so basically for now we can see that we are getting uh, at least three touches on this downside line so in a way maybe it's no longer a, a tentative line maybe it could actually continue holding so that's why uh, we have the upside scenario only from here from this barrier so that's what we're going to be waiting for in, or, in order to get comfortable with higher levels for now we're going to be leaning a little bit more to the downside um, however in order to get comfortable with lower levels we would need to see a drop below the low of this week uh, near the um, 37.94 level so roughly around here guys is that is that correct 30 sorry 30 is this correct so 37.94 that is correct so that's the current lowest point of this week and uh, if we get a drop below this then yes we could aim for a bit of more downside so that's why uh, for now um, yes it, it is stuck below all of these lines however to get a little bit more comfortable with the downside uh, or should I say at least in general to start considering the downside again we would need to see a drop below this territory right 
here. So um, AUD and ZD, also a very quick update on this one. Uh, I talked about uh, the this pair this week and what initially in the beginning of this week I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this barrier. We managed to overcome this. We, this week you can see that we managed to push higher above this, uh, managed to test the area around the 1.0606 level. So one of our targets was met. The other target was around the 1.0666 level. So that one uh, was not reached but to be honest looking at this picture it is already quite extended here to the upside even on the shorter time frame so uh, or even actually not even on the shorter time frame even on the daily chart it is quite ex uh, overextended here to the upside so uh, today we're seeing a bit of a correction this is quite healthy um, however all eyes are on this barrier and this is what I was, ta was talking about in one of the days this week when I was covering AUD and ZD that in a way this could travel a little bit higher could overcome this barrier the highlighted area and travel higher find some resistance here and then re reach reverse back to the downside but if this barrier the 1.0 1.0532 uh, territory holds this could lead to a nice, nice rebound and maybe a push back to the upside. However, if it breaks, uh, we could go for a bit of a deeper correction. Uh, again, we will class this move lower as a correction because uh, we would still be above this upside support line taken from the low of the 18th of March. Um, if this upside line breaks, now this is when we would we could maybe consider a bit of more uh, downside here and uh, we could see uh, this one uh, pushing maybe lower. So again, for now, uh, again, keep your eyes on this little upside support line. But for today, probably most of the, most importantly, keep your eyes on this 1.0532 territory. Let's see if the rate manages to stay above it. If it does, then maybe there is a chance for the bulls to step in here. Uh, but if it, if next week we start the week with a drop below this territory then yep deeper extensions to the or should i say a larger correction to the downside could be possible for now uh let's not get ahead of ourselves too much let's see how this is going to play out near this 1.0532 zone nzd cad now here you can see that uh given that AUD, AUD and ZD is pushing lower so the new zealand dollar is strengthening here a little bit and uh, in a way uh nzd cad here is a perfect example of the two a battle of the two kind of commodity linked currencies now uh, although nzd is not the strongest one uh overall um today it is one of the stronger ones and it's pushing higher and may and uh, a Canadian dollar is a good example of this one because Canadian dollar is getting weaker um, and uh, Canadian dollar is well because oil prices are dropping heavily and Canadian dollar is suffering uh, before uh, because of that so this is the little idea that I spoke about this week uh, in one day uh, where I was saying that in a way we'll keep an eye on this little a little triangle pattern and once it gets out of this pattern then yes we could consider a further directional move however if it pushes through this downside line here uh, yes we will aim for some higher levels but don't forget that we have this uh, medium term downside resistance line taken from the highest point of March 2019 and in a way this downside line could provide some resistance if this downside line breaks um, now this is where it could become very exciting for the buyers again for now uh, we're keeping close eye on this little pattern here let's see if the pair can stay above this upper side of this little um, not an ideal triangle I would say USDCHF. So USDCHF, uh, it's a bit of a, a mess here, I would say. So previously I talked about this little level here, the 0 0.9653 territory. And uh, what I was saying that if it drops below this, then yes, this could uh, lead to some further declines. It did drift lower. However, you can see that the next day it kind of uh, reversed sharply back to the upside and traveled, climbed back above this territory. So in other words, this territory becomes a little bit less important. And what we're going to do now is we're, we will monitor the lowest point of this um, the lowest point of this week and uh, that's roughly around the 0 0.9596 zone and in a way uh, in order to aim for lower levels we would like to see a drop below this because this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and maybe more sellers could be joining in however uh, for now 
the pair kind of is balancing not far from this downside line taken from the high of the 23rd of March so in a way as long as it remains below this there is still a chance for the bears to drift uh, push to push this one uh, this pair lower uh, but as I said in order to get comfortable with lower levels we need to see a drop below this for now we will remain let's say cautiously bearish I would say um, and we will uh, continue observing the price action let's in assume this this downside line breaks uh, we would like to see a push above this little barrier here um, in order to start considering higher levels this is 0 0.9716 level this barrier here um, if we get a break above this then yes we will start considering the, the upside however um, however a uh, we um, we will be very careful near this high of of April, near the current highest point of April, around the 0 0.9797, and if that um, if that area fails to withhold, then yes, uh, larger extensions to the upside could be possible. But again, for now, let's see how, where which of the highlighted areas will get broken. Um, and for now, like I said, we will remain cautiously bearish because we are still below this downside line. However, in order to get comfortable with the downside, we need to see a drop below this little territory right here, the 0 0.9596 zone. Uh, GBP USD. So this is a big question where this pair is going to end the week. Will it be below this 1.2485 level that I spoke about in the beginning of this week or will it be above it? So if we stay above this, then yes, there is a chance for this one to drift higher. However, if we close the week below this, then well, I mean, uh, maybe a bit of uh, a bit of correction, a bit of a correction here uh, to the downside could be possible. Initially, we'll target this 1.2195 zone, and then we will take it from there. For now, uh, we're to be honest, we're just neutral. We're just waiting for uh, for this one to see where it's going to close because, to be honest, it's not really presenting any opportunity here because it is here at this point in time. It's it looks like 50/50. Euro /50. um, USD. Uh, Euro USD. Um, um, well, this one here is tricky as well. It, to be honest, it barely moved, um, and uh, it still remains uh, below this upside support line taken from the low of the uh, 22nd of March, and it remains above this uh, downside resistance line uh, taken from the high of the uh, 8th of March. So, in other words, uh, we will we are still neutral, and this is what I was talking about this morning until it's kind of trading in this little territory between these two highlighted areas we will remain neutral we're not going to do anything here we're just going to continue observing this one we need to see a nice good close uh, uh, maybe a nice good strong push uh, above the 1.0953 territory and if we do see something like that again this kind of increases the chances of a potential move higher further north here but again for now uh, it's stuck here and to be honest we're not doing anything with this pair uh, because for us to even consider the downside we need to see a drop the 1.0777 and only then we could aim for lower levels that's the lowest point of fe uh, february this year and also as you can see here in the end of uh oh, sorry in the end of, in the beginning of april this area also held nicely uh, the rate from falling lower so that's why a drop below this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and uh, the next potential target could be around the 1.0633 zone which is currently the lowest point of this year so keep your eyes on that one okay guys so um I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for watching and listening, and I really appreciate your your likes, your comments, guys. You really, you're really making my day uh, worthwhile. So yes, I really appreciate that, guys. Thank you very much, and uh, I hope you have a fantastic uh, weekend. Um, for those who are celebrating uh, Orthodox Easter, Happy Easter, um, and uh, yeah, guys. Uh, for everybody else, uh, well, in general, everybody have a wonderful weekend. Start, try to stay safe. Um, continue Continue monitoring oil. That's quite interesting. Um, and uh, let's see where it's going to end the week. And uh, yep, I mean, again, guys, stay safe. Uh, be very careful. And uh, yep, we'll catch up on Monday. Um, as always, uh, try to catch my video around uh, 6 o'clock GMT time, maybe a little bit after that, uh, where we're going to have a quick look at the market. So again, uh, some of these instruments, some new ones, and uh, we'll, we'll take it from there. So... Thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate your time, and bye-bye.